Hello, this week I have the honor of the great Simon Love. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for I know joining you're me. I'm a busy, busy man <laughs> and traveling and doing lots of interviews, so thank you for squeezing me in. It's now, a pleasure, Barry. One of the most interesting people we've had on the show with quite a story to tell. I'm not sure my legs can take this standing up that long. <laughs> the story will be that long, but we'll try. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> so, you're back in the music. Yes, I, um, I've always been doing it, but it, this, this solo record has been uh, a long time in the coming, in the making. Um, it spans a, a period of the best songs I have right. going back about 25 years. Yes, as you were saying, the first, the oldest song on the album is actually 25 years old. Yeah, 25 years old, Love Comes Back to You by Nadine Sutherland, um, which was a song which I always believed in um, and, uh, you know, never found a, a specific place. Sometimes you write music and songs that don't fit that time yeah. and then they get but put on the shelf. But you know it's good. You know, know it's there'll good. There'll be a time when you and, and the thing when you know it's good is when you get it off the shelf a few years later. Still, sounds, still sounds good. good. Put it back. A few years later, it's a good tune. You know, if that keeps happening, you know you've got something. And there's plenty of tunes that don't do that, right? You, you listen back and you go, no. What was I thinking? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> wow. Okay. Barked up the wrong tree there. But, you know, this, this is the sort of a, a, a very much a a theme of this record there's many songs which have, have, have kind of stayed the test of time for me and all I had to do was to go back and recreate them and update them right. and make them ready for now and um, that was the beautiful process that started probably about two years ago I was gonna say so the oldest tune is 25 years old but obviously the album didn't take 25 years to no write. no so, no uh, well, the others when did they come well, I mean, you know, everything from in between, like Morning Love, which people know, um, Karen Wheeler's song on my record, we wrote together probably about four, five years ago. Right. And then I finished it off maybe about three years ago. Yeah. And then just when we kept, when we came to, when I came to finish it for this album, I added some beautiful flute by um, Gary Barnacle, who played glorious flute on it, and some guitar from a guitarist in Toronto called Adrian Eppleston. Who people might know, he was um, Drake's first MD yeah. and uh, amazing guitarist. Done a world tour with Kylie Minogue, amazing guy. Uh, you know, there's, there's very interesting musicians involved in this record from all over the place. Oh, well, you see, to me, it sounds like it's really been made by a master for the simple reason it sounds like real music with real instruments again. And, <laughs> you know, it, it's almost fresh sounding. Well, I mean, I think there is a way in which real musicians playing with heart and soul is always going to be fresh. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, uh, I, I, I think that's all. If you if you're creating something and you've got a you've got a, an ear out for what's happening, so you're not going to just be doing a a retro project. You know, yeah. I, I didn't want to do that, but I love particularly love music from the seventies and. That's my always my go-to. You're really. giving your age away there. You right? know. <laughs> well, I feel I actually feel nowadays I feel tremendously um, lucky to have lived through that era that, yeah. when that music was coming out for the first time. You know, yeah, the extraordinary, timeless sure. music. You know? And you know, as it says, real music, the strings, the horn section, the percussion—it's all. It, it doesn't there. go out of style. And that's what I actually hear in this album. So it's almost something fresh. Mm. You know, oh, thank you. That's that's the idea. You know, I, I think there's sort of elements of arrangement and production here, which, hey, I, I'm a music fan just like you. Yeah. I've I've delved deeply into Philadelphia International, yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire, Quincy Jones, Marvin, Curtis. These people I've listened to very, very closely and, and studied. You know, and 
And you, all of them make it inspiration, you know? Very it's, much, very much. They all go into the mix, you know, and then you kind of, a, a country boy from Suffolk, <laughs> filters <laughs> them through and out it comes like this. With a bit of trinity. <laughs> With a bit of trinity. Yeah, we yeah, must, we, we must mention, we mustn't forget <laughs> that. <laughs> we won't forget that. No, we'll absolutely. That very crucial bit, yeah. So tell me the starting of your journey to where you are now. So you started, you said you were teaching. Yeah, well, I, I mean, as an adult, I went uh, to, to teach a training college, came out of school, really didn't know, well, I knew I wanted to make music, but... Yeah, because you come from a musical family. Yeah, my mum was a professional musician, yeah. She sang with the BBC singers. And, right. Uh, she was, you know, very successful. Um, and then she met my dad and they had a family and then... You know, her musical skills went more into working in the church and, and that area. But before that, she was very successful. Because your father was a... Anglican minister. Minister. Yeah. That's why how we ended up in Trinidad. <laughs> right. Let's hear that story, because that's very interesting. I like that. Well, Shigwarnas, the, the, the town of Shigwarnas in central Trinidad. We went there when I was two years old. Right. And we left when I was seven. And you're the eldest. So, I'm the eldest, yeah. yeah. So I do have some very... Faint memories. Well, I wouldn't say faint. I would say, you know, we, we remember back, what, sort of four from four on. Okay. So I have some very, very strong memories. All right. And, um, and I think, as I look back now, and many people have asked me, you know, what's your earliest influences? And I think, as a little kid, as a little toddler, I would have heard, my mum had a steel pan orchestra. She oh, ran, really well. and they would rehearse under the house. There was a house on sort of on uh, concrete stilts, you know. Yeah. So they would rehearse under the house. Those those beautiful lilting rhythms and yeah. vibes fell to, fell asleep to those. Steel pan, you know, steel pan. Yeah, is um, something very special. It's very special, yeah. you know. And uh, my dear old mum actually has a mention. There's a beautiful book, a uh, beautiful big book about the history of pan. Really? She has a mention in there for her role sort of introducing um, some some um, classical music into the repertoire of steel pan orchestras. So she yeah. would do, she would sort of score out some Mozart and Beethoven. And they'd be playing and Mozart it, and it went, on the band. Yeah, yeah, and it went down really great. You know, sort of it was quite revolutionary for its time. Right. So she has a lovely little write-up in that book, The History of Pan, it's called. I'd have to seek that out. Yeah, yeah. So you were there until seven. Yeah. Came back to England. Came back to England. And? My dad got a parish in Shropshire, very oh. rural Shropshire. And um, I ended up going to um, Hereford Cathedral School to uh, being a choir boy at the cathedral school. It was a boarding right. school. Okay. And I don't know, for, for folks who don't know, you know, when you become a, a, a chorister in a cathedral choir, it's music of a very high level and you do it every day. You, you, yeah. You do a, you sing a service every day after school. You rehearse before school and after school. You do three services on a Sunday. You're a professional musician as a kid. Yeah, it's literally your life. It's your life. It's There's your no life. room for anything else but yeah. studying, and that's it. And, yeah. So you know, I really that was a very huge influence on me too, most definitely. I'm that, sure. that was English church music. And then I think you know when I when I left there and um, started listening to what I liked. I gravitated towards music that had funk. Yeah. I, I would describe it as it, you know, when I when I hear bands or anything now, it doesn't matter what genre it is, if it hasn't got some funk so, in it, it doesn't move. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got to have that little <laughs> knot, groove, that yeah, groove, groove, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, and that's what I sort of, you know, I think we all kind of gravitate to the music that speaks to us. And I, I, well, yeah, I think that's what you don't choose it. It's, no, it chooses it's what you, you feel what you feel. It. Yeah. And what moves you inside? Yeah, yes. Most definitely, yeah. And so I just got interested in that, and I started to learn to play the drums. Taught myself how to play the drums. Okay. I'm actually a drummer first and foremost. Most people know me as a piano player. But yeah, keyboard, that's why I know you yeah. as a pianist. Yeah, not a, a drummer. This but, is um, news. Yeah, drum, drum. So I do a lot of live drums on this this album. And, um, you see, we haven't got enough time for this guy. There are always little things that we're going to keep finding. <laughs> we haven't got enough room for him. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I... So music was always in you. Yeah, very much, yeah. So what took you to go to teach? Well, I think, you know, like a lot of people come out at the end of high school and um, 
you know, you wonder what you're going to do. I'm sure. Uh, you, you know, I, I mean, I know I wanted to make music, but I mean, that wasn't, a, right. it's not a clear career path. It you doesn't. Know? So I, I just ended up doing some teaching and I, I became a primary school teacher. And I, I did enjoy it, but it wasn't, it wasn't really my vocation. It wasn't really what I really wanted to do. And I had a moment, I had several moments where I thought, what am I doing here? You know, I'm responsible for 30 kids and my heart's yeah. not really in it. That's not really and good they, for them. That, yeah, I was they say, need they somebody. They need you that. Somebody yeah. that is. I mean, my heart was in it when I was doing music with them. But when yeah. I was trying to teach them to read or maths or, <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't think I was giving them the best. <laughs> so I'm really sorry to the, those folks who've now all grown up who are linked primary school in Tutu. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry, guys. <laughs> He did it with the best will. He, he wasn't intentional. This should have just been a music school. He would have been happy. Yeah, though. I think that would have worked better for me. Yeah. So you gave that up? Yeah. And decided that's enough. I, and, I did. And, and um, I have to pursue my dream. Yeah, I had to pursue my dream. So um, I went to work. First of all, I went to work in a clothes shop in King's Road. Took Far a bit from a dream. Took, took quite, quite a pay cut. You know, and, uh, and then, you know, just started. So to, what kind of age was that? I guess um, I left college eighty three, yeah. so I did it for three years, eighty around eighty six. So, okay, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. And I was very fortunate because you know my sister Joanna Law, who you've had on your show, another wonderful woman you all <laughs> remember, another one, just a world of talent. It's just too big. <laughs> it's just too big. Yes, you know, Joe and I made a lot of music together. Uh, or we always have done, but back then we had a band and um, we were playing a lot of live shows and not really getting very far. I mean, it was fun, but it wasn't really going anywhere. Then I decided that that was sort of around 86, 87. You know, uh, I had to make a 12 inch. I wanted to make, was going out dancing. Yeah. You know, going to Africa Center, lots of other clubs. That's where I met Jazzy. We met, We made a twelve-inch record, and that actually then we got some traction. So, what was the twelve-inch record? It was called City Heat, and right. we called ourselves City Heat, and it got signed by Chrysalis Records. Yeah, Chrysalis. Danny D, bless his cotton socks, he introduced the record. He he sort of discovered us, I guess. He gave the record to Peter Robinson, who was the boss of Chrysalis, and he signed us to a two-single deal. Right, and. Um, and then you know that first yeah, song, ja that, that first song Jazzy played it at uh, at uh, the Africa Center, right. and then I got to meet him, and we decided to start doing some music together. And then and we, the great single was born. And then and then it's sort of off and running, and you know like wow, it's wildfire so quick. So what was the first thing you and Jazzy did together? Keep on moving. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't involved in to this day. <laughs> Keep on moving. I don't care. <laughs> you just wait for that drop. Yeah. Untouchable. It's just a sweet tune. Untouchable. Yeah. And, it, and it transformed our lives, you know. And we were talking about Karen Wheeler earlier, you know. That's when I met Karen at that time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, been a friend since and done all sorts of stuff together, you know. And I'm still very good friends with both Karen and Jazzy. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Keep on moving. Don't stop. And then, back to life. Back to life, yeah, which, uh, you know, was, um, it was extraordinary. I think we, we knew that it was going to do okay, but then it just went a little bit. It became a phenomenon. Yeah, phenomenon. Yeah, phenomenon. And it was so big in the States, and, you know, it really was quite extraordinary. And then that opened up many doors for me as a producer in my own right. And I started to work with uh, JT Taylor of Gang, yeah. you know, Shante Moore, Junior Giskin here, you know, produce some stuff. Morning will come, which is a favorite of some people. And, uh, of <laughs> <laughs> yes. and you know, I, I sort of, you know, got going and then we got back together again with Soul to Soul. I got back to them to make the second album. Uh, I wasn't involved in the third album, but then the next album after that, I believe I was involved in all the records after that. Just the third that I wasn't involved in because I was just so busy with my own things, you know. Yeah. And, um, 
It was a, it was a crazy period that so sort of first... So you disappeared from England, you left us and, and went to Canada? Yes, I did, yeah. yeah I went to Canada, I left England in 2004. Um, I had three kids and um, was married to a Canadian and decided to go back there and sort of be there. Yeah, right, yeah. And, um, you know, and that, that didn't work out with Tina, but um, we, you know, we got three beautiful kids. And I'm living, I live there now, and I come back here lots and lots of times, you know. It's great, I, I really have two hometowns. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Yeah. So let's get to the new album. I mean, 16 tracks. Mm -hmm. All your babies, so you're very high. You've asked me to choose a favorite before, and I mean, how it's hard like is that? someone to choose which <laughs> child they like. The best. Yeah, you, I, it's very, very well, hard. Well, my mother better like me the best. Anyway, you can <laughs> imagine. You can imagine the. But yeah, sixteen <laughs> of your babies, and I'm saying to you, which one do you like best? And I know it's not. They're very. very di there's some very different ones. You know, it's a very eclectic record. Uh, That's there what are I many see, yeah. different styles there. It's not. Um, there's all sorts of things in there. There's well, all of you, will t all of them will touch you in a different way. Yeah, they will. So you yeah. know, they're all going to be special to you. Mm -hmm. You know, but play one that. What should I say? I don't know. Okay, play one that is particularly special. Yes, particularly special. I will. Um, so this one here is child, and this is uh, the. The, the most ballad-like song on the record. And it's a song that I actually, most songs on the record I've written with other people, but this is a song I wrote myself. Okay. And Lane Gray sings it. I was gonna say, who's doing the vocals? Yeah, Lane sings it beautifully. Oh, right. And um, it was lovely, we actually got to perform this on Robert Elm's show the other day, okay. and uh, on a Jazz FM too. So, you know, it's it's connecting with people, and I, and I think it's a pertinent message for these days, these times we're in, which yeah. are pretty crazy, you know. Really crazy. So shall I press play? Press play, let's <laughs> hear it. He's got a great voice, like with no shade of madness to stop. But something happens along the road, the ways of the world take their toll. Well, he comes, he was in the group New Colors. Yeah. And um, he comes from a very strong gospel background. Yeah. Which is always I, a great fun. Always a great fun. And I had a, a very amazing moment recording this song. I'll just turn it down a fraction. Because I, I did a demo of the song. <laughs> and. Um, you know, I wanted Lane to sing it, right. and he just listened to it. And then he, he came over, came up to Toronto. He lives in Houston, Texas. Right. Came up to Toronto, just sang it back. I had the microphone on, and really took two takes. I and my, I was just crying because he, 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 he took my rough demo and just elevated it up to here. You, know? you didn't think it could possibly be? Well, I like, yeah. know, it was just, it was a very moving moment, one of yeah. those very special moments in music when you make music that and it just, it just comes and together. And he just knew where, yeah. how to do it, what to do, yeah. and yeah, very, very you give it to him and he just says, leave it with yeah, me. Yeah, he did, exactly. <laughs> leave it with yeah. me. Yeah. I know what you mean, Simon. Yeah. Let's hear another. Yes. Okay, now let me go back to, um, this is a, a special tune. This is uh, is this the Carolina? This is, no, this is um, Sunshine Girl. So this is uh, 
a tune with Maxi Priest. All right. And Lane as well does a bit of singing and the rapper Ruben Aeson. So um, have a listen to this. See, when you're a legend such as yourself, you can just draw in. <laughs> And well, Maxi and I, it's great to yeah, work with him. That's love, true. love it. And also, Sly Dunbar is doing drums on this. African <laughs> Queen. Oh, Ireland in the sun. It really is an eclectic girl. It's very good. Yeah. got some reggae in here. I know, uh, there's three reggae songs on there. Yeah. yeah. I love Jamaican music, but it's always spoken to me. Very powerful, man. You know. Love, love Jamaican music. I'd love, you, I'd love to play you a little bit of Look to the Sky, one with Jazzy on it. Play it, please yeah. do. Let me fade this down a bit. Let's hear it. Okay. Let's so this is one with Jazzy. This is Jazzy. Jazzy B. Jazzy B. Yeah. This uh, before the I, legendary Jazzy. In fact, B. I'll put I'll, I'll put it on, uh, and it's got a sort of slow ambient build up, and I'll tell you the story of the tune because it's quite interesting. Um, uh, yeah, it sort of starts with a wind and a breeze, which I actually recorded in Antigua. I think it's that one. Oh, I don't know. But um. Oh, you've been to the mansions in Antigua. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hang on. Wait. I hear his voice. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so. That's definitely Jazzy. That's Jazzy B. So. My ass. It started life as a soul to soul tune. But again, it was one of those things that sat on the shelf for a long time. And it was a very basic idea, not what you hear now, just a rough idea. But I always knew it had something. Yeah. So I said to him, man, I, I really want to use that song for my record. And will you do a vocal on it? And, you know, Lane's going to sing the chorus. And he was really into it. So, you know, we finished off and, yeah, really, um, and I, I'm, I'm very proud of this song. And this is the title track, Look to the Sky. It has a surprise coming for you in a minute. Such a great collaboration. I don't know the Caribbean I mean, rain. But sunshine, no haze. As I look to the sky. There's a surprise coming in a minute, Barry. If you haven't heard this tune. <laughs> See what I mean? Okay. It takes a different direction. Well, you still got the, you still got the, the house groove. You think it's going one way, but it's. And wait for the B line. Yeah, that's what I mean. It goes one direction and it takes you somewhere else. I, I love yes. I love I love that era of music, uh, Sly and Robbie, Black Uhuru, that late seventies era. Yeah. This sort of steppish rhythm. And I, I always thought a kind of house groove with that yeah. would work. It's so, just different because in the beginning you feel like you're going into a house situation. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. something comes in that yeah. tells you it's more it's burning time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. More burning spirit. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's hear the Karen tune. Yeah. The Karen let, me, let, me, let me play you Karen's song. Okay. Um, I'm giving you little snippets of this yeah, album. Little here. Snippets, yeah. You know you have to go and get it, right? You have to go and get it. Uh, and uh, something I would, I would, I would tell the, the folks watching that the the album is um, it's a collection of songs, but each song absolutely flows into the next yeah um so that it's sort of one kind of comes to an end and the other one comes in and it's very much a whole piece so if you want to put your headphones on 
77 minutes and just being taken on a ride. A journey. It's a big old journey, yeah. yeah. And each song will, it won't be sort of stops. It just, it just flows, it's it's comes to a rest and, and then yeah. comes again, you know. So so this is yeah. the Carolina chip. Yeah, this is a Carolina song called Morning Love. Now this has been getting a lot of airplay. Hasn't it, it has actually. It's still it's getting a lot, a lot of, of airplay. airplay. Yeah, I've heard it a lot on. It's beautiful. As I said, Jazz FM. Yeah. And my, my soul. soul. Yeah. Um, Solar. A lot of the, the the stations. I mean, I I because I don't live here anymore. I've I've not been so aware of how what a thriving scene oh, the yeah. soul scene is here. It really has grown. Yeah. From from the, over the last twenty years, for yeah, sure. Because there so. definitely weren't that many outlets for it. No, and now you I know, mean it, it does seem pirates. yes, and now, now you know legit. little stations yeah. all over the place who are run Absolutely. by very real fans who know their stuff, you know, yeah. and people who really care about. And the that's music. the thing is that you know it's not these legitimate stations that are being run by people who really know the history of the music. They do who really have I've really that found feeling that. in there. Yeah. It's part of them. Yeah. You know, so I, I totally not just doing it from a business point no, of view. Or no, a, often not at know, all. Not at all. It's, it's really for their love. love. It's really yeah. for their love. Yeah. Let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one. This little party here. <laughs> I mean, her voice still kills me. I've, yeah. You know, her voice is a, a a natural wonder of the world to me. But again, she is one of the a... finest singers on the planet. Yeah. In my opinion, Karen Wheeler, extraordinary and very influential singer. She has influenced many people. Yeah. Because she started in a reggae band. Yeah. Yeah, 15, 16, 17. Yes, uh, Brown Sugar. Brown Sugar. Yeah. Lover's Rock Band. That's yeah. right, a yeah. rocker band back yeah. in the 70s. Yep. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the, um, the little turnaround bridge in this song has a real nod to those days. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep it playing till, because you'll notice what I mean. It's got a little, uh, you remember that beautiful song? Uh, Silly, silly games. Yeah, yeah, silly yeah. games by uh, Janet, Janet Kay. Janet Kay. So there's a little kind of vibe. I just wanted to have that atmosphere of those that era of the late seventies, where there was often one or two reggae tunes in the charts. Yeah. And they'd be on top of the pops, and they would Uptown be on top right Yeah. In. You know. <laughs> Out here and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. They, it, and most British people know those tunes. Yeah. You know, they are classics. Yeah. They don't know them in Canada or the States, you know? They're not so overarching. Yeah, such a, really and truly, in England, we have such an eclectic, eclectic musical scene yeah. that they don't necessarily No, have. it's very, it's very yeah. sort of compartmentalised. Yeah. yeah. You got the rock scene, you got That's the, the, the the sort of R and B scene, and it it doesn't get jumbled up. You know, much, you, you used know? to go to clubs and you would hear reggae starting, lycian all day, yeah. and then yeah. and then there would be some pop tune in there as well. It was, yeah, so you just had people that had an appreciation of music. Yeah, music, music, music yeah, music, indeed. Now, yeah, I have a special thing already for <laughs> this particular tune. Love message. Message, message of love. love. Message yes. of love. I love this. Okay. Let's have you it. Wanna, you want to hear that? Okay. I do. Um, I do, I do, I is, do, I do. Okay. So the message of love is actually the most recently written song. We wrote this, Lane Gray and I wrote this down in Houston where he lives in, I guess, probably about October. Right. And I wanted, I wanted to write a song about particularly what's happening in America with police brutality. Right. Like, I really wanted to sing a song about this. And, but I mean, of course, it's a phenomenon that's happening all over the world. And I brought this idea, the chorus, I come to bring you a message of love. Oh, it says, I come to bring you a message of hope, a message of peace, a message of love. love. And then Lane wrote the verses, which you'll hear here. Okay. And, um, 
I'm very proud of this song because I think we we really you know I didn't want to I want my my album to be um, very relevant for the times that we live in too mm. you know so have a listen folks oh wrong song beg your pardon to edit See, that I out. think he likes that he likes that song <laughs> yeah, I wanted to he's hear. got a special thing for. <laughs> For that song, I know you have to. Really so this has quite a long ambient intro. Uh, so we could, it sort of sets the the, uh, the tone of the piece. Um, now we're going to listen to the intro. Yeah. And then hear the intro. Now when the tune actually starts, it goes somewhere else completely. It really does. Yeah. It goes somewhere else completely. But we're just letting you hear a snippet of the intro. And now we're going to skip forward. <laughs> we're going to skip forward. It's actually coming. The, the start is coming. It's oh. not, not far off. Let's just let it run, actually. All right. It's, it's coming very, very close. So. This is a feel good show. So tell me, what do you do to take care of yourself? What do I take? Yes, yeah, do to take care of yourself. You know, like when you're stressed, when you're whatever, under pressure, what do you do to bring yourself down to that equilibrium and feel good? Because well, we all have our own methods of yeah, how to do that. Right? Absolutely. I, I try to meditate every day with my partner, Jen, Jen Schaefer, who actually sings and written a song on this album. Okay. Too. We meditate together every day. We have... Uh, not every day, but we do long, big walks together in, in, in Toronto. There's some lovely nature areas, lovely forested areas. We, we do that regularly. Music is a great stress, stress buster for me. If things are really piling up for me, I, I'll go to the piano and, and play. Because really, music can shift your mood. Yeah. In an instant. Yes, it's a transformative yeah, it can power. Shift your mood yeah. in an instant. And you know, um, I do. I, I I don't do so much yoga anymore because I've been very busy lately. But I love yoga, right? And I, I really, every time I do some yoga, it really is incredibly beneficial. So yeah, you feel the benefit uh, absolutely instantly. instantly, instantly. And then the more you do it, the better it is. Better you, you know, will, yeah. so you know, somehow a mixture of all those things. I mean, yeah, life can really get on top of you sometimes. That's what I mean. So yeah. we all have to have methods of yeah. how we will look after ourselves and, you know, stop you from going over the edge because a lot of people don't recognize the science and they're under pressure, they're hustling, they're rushing. And that's when they go over the edge. Yes, indeed. You know, so it's indeed. very important that we recognize those signs. Yeah. And we have a method to bring it under control. Yeah, I, I think... Um, I, I also have done a lot of reading about uh, mindfulness and um, yes. and being very present in the moment and that that sort of concept has helped me enormously actually and I ironically I think when I make music I am absolutely in the moment yeah and that's therapy in itself and, and, and yeah but the trick is then because I think we all have parts of our lives when we do feel very in the flow and in the moment and um, my dear therapist who I thank actually on the on the record Karen Klebecki she she really said well those moments when you feel that really recall those recall how it feels and when you feel yourself really getting wound up bring yourself back to yeah bring it back to that moment how did I feel in that moment yeah and you really felt you know you didn't feel stressed it just life was flowing yeah. and so and it's about equilibrium and balance and perspective and knowing mm -hmm. that sometimes life is up and sometimes it's down. Yeah, and, yeah. But you have to keep that. It, it's it's finding that uh, place of calm and center, which we all have. Yeah, we really all now, have. Now talking about therapies, you were saying in Toronto you do something with dementia. Yes, I do. Yeah, musical therapy for dementia. Yeah, I've um, it's, it's some some work that I've really um. I really love and and feel. Well, now. it's obviously close to your heart because I know your father has dementia. Yeah, it yeah. is close to my heart, and that's why I was interested initially because of my father, who's who now has very 
advanced Alzheimer's. But um, this opportunity came to sort of work with folks with dementia there. And uh, I now find it as, as equally as a inspiring work as my own music. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very interesting how the two kind of cross over and inspire one another. And I do a lot of music making with the folks. Right. We do a lot of, uh, at the moment, we're engaged in writing this song together. Everyone is putting their ideas in. I'm going to record it. We'll make a video. We're making a documentary about the process, actually. And how many people are you working with? Oh, I mean, sometimes I have uh, a class of um, 25 people. Right. You know. And they're all in varying stages yeah, of dementia? Yeah, not, not very advanced Alzheimer's okay. but, or dementia, but early to medium onset Alzheimer's right. or dementia, yeah. And it's very uh, rewarding and beautiful work because music has such a, uh, a powerful impact, uh, a transformative power. And I, I see that every time I go and work there, you know, we, we all know that when, when we're feeling down, we, you know, there's nothing better than cranking up the tunes yeah. and dancing and... Uh, but here I see it with folks who are really, you know, coming towards the end of their lives with, and, they, and they have dementia. And uh, music can absolutely transform and uplift you, you know, and bring back a whole sense of life and joy. As you yourself you know. said earlier, you know, music, animals and laughter. Yeah. And the three things that <laughs> yes. make you feel good. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> they, you feel good. they just do. Yeah. And we, there's a, a, a lady who brings in a beautiful dog and some other pets there sometimes. And that, that again, transformed. Yeah. You know? So tell me, what's the next move? Or have you not planned that yet? You're still dealing with promoting this <laughs> wonderful album here. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> this yes, wonderful this album. wonderful album. <laughs> Um, I think that the next, the real next uh, thing is to put together, uh, to perform this live, put together a live band. Uh, band to perform this. And it's not straightforward because on this album I have guest artists like Jazzy B, uh, Karen Wheeler, Maxi Priest, you know, Shantae Moore, Nadine Sullivan, possibly get all those. And they're all, all in their careers and they're all spread out over across the world. I think if you had them all in one auditorium, the place would explode. Yeah. It's so combust. Yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, Lane and I, who work very closely together, we would be the heart of the band. And, um, you know, it would be uh, very exciting and I'd love to perform it very much. It would be a thrill. That would be something to see. And yeah. especially if you could really get all of these well, artists to come in. you know, but what a dream of mine is that we sort of get to to go around the world playing this and when we go to LA Shantae gets up when we go to Jamaica Nadine gets up right. you know, when we come to London Jazzy, Jazzy gets up, gets up. Yeah, really, you know what I mean like I, that kind of vibe <laughs> well Simon thank you so much for thank you man us. yes bless it's thank you it's been an absolute pleasure uh, pleasure too and yeah. yeah stay in touch yes I will stay in I touch I will indeed yeah thank you very much <laughs> see you all next week all the best Thank you.